Hello aspirants, welcome to GK Today Current Affairs presentation. I am Yaswadhan and today is 10th July. Let's start. In this video, we are going to talk about following issues. First is recent decision of Ministry of Human Resource Development to grant institutions of eminence status. Next is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs launched Indian Smart Cities Fellowship and Smart Cities Internship Program. Up next is FSSAI developed a toolkit to promote safe and healthy food. Up next is minority status was given to Jews in Gujarat. Next is ABD loan for Son Canal in Sahabad, Hojpur region. Next is Sathi app. Up next is India and China had a deal to reduce tariff on Indian medicine. Next we are going to talk about world's largest mobile factory. Up next is China launched two remote sensing satellites for Pakistan. Next issue is Brexit. We are going to talk what is the status of Brexit right now. Next is men's Booker Prize and we are going to talk about certain miscellaneous news. In the end, we are going to talk about sports news. So let's start. First news is Ministry of Human Resource Development granted institutions of eminence status to three public and three private institutions. Now this tag will enable these institutions to get full autonomy as well as special incentive package so that they can be projected as world-class universities. While the government institutions will be eligible for funding, private institutions will not be eligible for that government funding. The government has decided to provide 1000 crore grants to these three public institutions which has been given the tag of institutions of eminence. The government institutions are IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay and IISC Bangalore. While the private institutions are Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Beth Spilani and GEO Institution. The institutions of eminence are important for country though we do have 800 universities but not even a single university is in top 100 as per a world university ranking published by times higher education there is no institution from india in top 200 and that is a matter of concern next issue is related to ministry of housing and urban affairs the ministry launched India's Smart City Fellowship and India's Smart City Internship Program. The idea is to provide opportunity to you so that they can get the knowledge of urban planning and governance. The Indian Smart Cities Fellowship Program will cultivate young leaders, strengthen their understanding of Indian urban sector and prepare them for greater leadership role in future. The second initiative that is India's Smart City Internship Program that will select some students so that they can act as an intern to help the implementation of smart city projects in various states and cities. They will be given an experience certificate at the end of completion of the program. Now let's talk about what is smart cities mission. Smart cities mission is an urban renewal and retrofitting program. That means the idea is to develop 100 cities across the country making them citizen friendly and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs is responsible for the implementation of smart cities program in collaboration with the respective state governments and respective cities administration. Next news is FSSAI that is Food Safety and Standards Authority of India developed a toolkit to promote safe and healthy first let's talk about what is FSSAI? This is a body which is under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. FSSAI developed this toolkit to provide a training health workers under Ayushman Bharat scheme for raising public awareness on the issues at grassroots level. Now what is the idea behind this toolkit? The toolkit is designed to provide food safety and nutrition messages to citizens in an interesting and engaging manner. The organization FSSAI has also launched a eat right movement that is to promote awareness about safe and nutritious food at schools, home place and workplace. Now let's talk about what is Ayushman Bharat. The Ayushman Bharat has two major components. One is NHPS that is National Health Protection Scheme. Another is Health and Wellness Centre. Now as far as NHPS is concerned, NHPS is an initiative which will cover over 10 crore vulnerable families and that will provide coverage up to 5 lakh rupees per family per year for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization. The NHPS that is National Health Protection Mission will subsume the ongoing initiative. First is RSBY that is Rashtriya Swastha Bima Yojana and second is Senior Citizen Health Insurance Scheme. So these two schemes will be subsumed under NHPS. The beneficiaries can avail benefits 
in both public as well as in private hospitals. Now, second component of Ayushman Bharat is Health and Wellness Centre. The government intends to open 1.5 lakh health and wellness centre by 2022. These will be equipped to treat various diseases including blood pressure, diabetes, cancer and old age illness. Now let's talk about next issue that is Gujarat state government has given minority status to Javis community. At central level that is uh, at national level six religious communities has been given minority status. These are Muslims, Christians, Sikh, Buddhist, Parsis and Jains. Now since minority status is associated with National Commission for Minorities. So let's talk about National Commission of Minorities. The National Commission for Minorities was formed under National Commission for Minorities Act 1992. That means it is a statutory body, not a constitutional body. We have already discussed what is the difference between statutory body and constitutional body. Constitutional bodies are those bodies which are mentioned in constitution while statutory bodies are those bodies which are created by Act Mr. Sayyid Hassan Rizvi is the chairman of National Commission for Minorities. Up next is CRPF launched a help center named Sathi for Amarnath pilgrims so that information can be provided to Yatris, those who are staying in camps. Now let's talk about CRPF. CRPF is Central Reserve Police Force which is India's largest central armed police force. It functions under Ministry of Home Affairs. This should be kept in mind that it is not under the Ministry of Defense. The paramilitary forces works under Ministry of Home Affairs. The CRPF's primary responsibility is in assisting state and union territories in police operations to maintain law and order and counter insurgency. Mr. Rajiv Roy Bhatnagar, who is an IPS officer, is the Director General of CRPF. Next news is Tourism Ministry discontinued scheme to provide free SIM cards to foreign tourists. This facility was introduced to help foreign tourists to remain connected until their own SIM cards were activated after arriving in India. Now, as far as the government is concerned, government has said that tourists use social media apps and Wi-Fi facilities which are available at most airports. Therefore, this initiative is not required anymore. That's why government discontinued. Next news is related to Asian Development Bank. AVD sanctioned loan for Son Canal in Shahabad Bhojpur region. The amount is of US dollar 503 million. The project Son Canal in Shahabad Bhojpur region will benefit the agriculture sector immensely. Now let's talk about Asian Development Bank. It's a regional development bank which was formed in 1966. Its headquarter is in Manila. ADB is an official UN observer. Presently, Japan and US are the largest shareholders. China is at third position while India is at fourth position in terms of shareholding. Next news is China India had a deal to reduce tariff on Indian medicines and take cancer drugs. Indian drugs specifically cancer curing medicines are in big demand in China because they are far cheaper than their western counterparts because India is a hub of generic medicine. India has been demanding opening of China's IT and pharmaceutical sector because there is a huge trade deficit of 51 billion dollar in over 84 billion bilateral trade. Next news is related to South Korean President Moon Jae's official visit to India. Both Indian Prime Minister and South Korean President jointly inaugurated Samsung Center which is going to be the world's largest mobile factory. This is located in Noida. Next news is Liberty House receives COC approval to acquire Adhunik Metallics steel plant. UK based Liberty House has received approval of Committee of Creditors. Now the plant is located in Odisha. Adhunik Metallic plant has been under corporate insolvency resolution process since last year. So now this Liberty House has received approval of committee of creditors so that it can acquire and revive Adhunik Metallic. Next news is NCLT that, that is National Company Law Tribunal uphold Tata Sons 2016 move to sack Mr. Cyrus Mistry as chairman. When Mr. Cyrus Mistry was sacked, he challenged the decision before NCLT. NCLT ruled that the Tata Sons board of directors was competent to remove the executive chairman and Mr. Mistry was ejected as the board members had lost confidence in him. Next news is related to Ericsson announces expansion of its Connect to Learn initiative in India. Swedish telecommunication company that is Ericsson announced 
that it is going to expand its connect to learn initiative in india under which the company is providing solutions that will help in ensuring internet connectivity to various education initiatives the idea is to secure education for all the initiative was launched in 2010 with the purpose of increasing access to quality education specifically for girls through technological solutions and digital platforms across the globe the connect to learn initiative has touched more than 120000 students in 25 countries next news is related to sun pharma sun pharma which is a pharmaceutical company based in mumbai signed mr akshay kumar as brand ambassador for health supplement revital mr dilip singh v is the managing director of sun pharma Next news is China recently launched two remote sensing satellites for Pakistan. One of them is PRSS-1. This is a remote sensing satellite built by China. The other is Park TES-1A, which is indigenously developed by Pakistan for scientific experiment. PRSS-1 would be used for land and shore surveillance and monitoring of natural disasters, agriculture research, urban construction, as well as monitoring the China's project. that is cpec china pakistan economic corridor which is a component of china's belt and road initiative this is not the first time when china and pakistan cooperated in terms of space operations in 2011 also china and pakistan cooperated for a communication satellite pak sat 1r that was launched in 2011 next news is related to brexit foreign secretary mr boris johnson and brexit secretary mr david davis resigned from theresa may's cabinet due to brexit negotiations recently the european union withdrawal bill which is british government central legislation to exit from european union become law uk is scheduled to depart from european union on 29th of march 2019 next news is related to men's booker prize the prize was given to the english patient which is a war time love story by michael odant j who is a canadian next news is related to commonwealth short story prize for asia india's mr sagnik datta is the winner of 2018 commonwealth short story prize the name of mr datta's story is the divine pregnancy in 12 year old women next news is related to sports india's ajay jayaram finished runner up at white knight international challenge badminton in russia white knights international challenge is an open international badminton tournament held in Russia. Next news is related to British Grand Prix. Mr Vettel won Formula 1. The Prix was held in Silverstone, England. Since 2014 to 2017, Mr Hamilton was the winner, but this time he finished on second position. Next news is related to Advisory Commission of Commonwealth Games. Ms Deepika Palikal has been appointed as Asia's representative in prestigious athletes advisory commission of the commonwealth games federation athletes advisory commission is a body that will represent and speak on the behalf of all commonwealth athletes that's all for the day if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and please visit gktoday.in for more updates thank you and have a nice day